Thanks for sticking with us for this final segment of training camp tonight. Now, my friends Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright have been out here for every single practice of Broncos training camp 2020. So how did day 10 stack up against all the other practices so far? Let's find out. All right, Benjamin, let's talk about day 10 of Broncos training camp. And it was a spirited practice after kind of a walkthrough with Scout yesterday. Today, you had both offense and defense chirping. It almost felt like there was a little bit of an incentive out there for some reason. But yeah, you definitely saw as they're heading into an off day in the middle of the week, you definitely saw both sides wanting to win out there. Yeah, pads were popping. Uh, there was uh, there was definitely some a uh, little more aggression, some more tempo than there was uh, yesterday, um, and and you could see that. I mean, it wasn't just having the quarterback out at safety and mixing it up like it was yesterday. It was actual alignments, actual guys back to competing for jobs. Uh, I think it was Trey Marshall put a pop on uh, on a receiver trying to make the end zone there at the end. Um, I it, it looked like uh, it looked like guys were ready to hit today. Yeah, definitely. Now, we saw throughout the course of practice a little bit of inconsistency from the offense. Is it any more than usual? Is there anything concerning? We saw some drops today, a couple of drops from Jerry Judy. That's a little uncharacteristic for him. Anything concerning about that? I don't think so. I think it's just natural ebb and flow of training camp. I think that uh, we happen to note more drops because it was Jerry Judy and we haven't particularly seen those, but there have been drops every day by different guys. Um, when Kendall Hinton or Trinity Benson does it, we don't really jot it down, but uh, we, we notice it more today if uh, if a Jerry Judy does it. I, if it. If it happens for three or four straight days, then I start to get worried. I thought the placement of passes today by both Drew Locke and Jeff Driscoll. Might have been Jeff Driscoll's best day at camp. That's where I was going with that. And you know what's really funny about that you say that because I had that written as a note, like one of his best days until the very one of the very last passes of the day where he almost took off Devontae Harris's head because the pass was so far behind the receiver, it almost just basically hit the grill of the defender. Yeah, the, the defender was in trail technique on the on the play and behind it, and Driscoll I just either didn't understand the spot or didn't name it correctly. I don't know. And yeah, the ball was a good five yards behind where it should have been and, and drilled the uh, drill the corner in the in the helmet so but outside of that he had a great day drew lock had some great placements so you had those drops but otherwise i thought both quarterbacks were on the same page for the most part with their receivers i think so and i think it's pretty much where you want to be at this point in camp you know i mean there, you'll have a miscue or two and that's fine you still gotta you gotta sharpen those edges up but um, for the most part, you want to be on the same page at this point. You've been through a full week. You know, you've had 10 practices or whatever. You're, you're, you're at the point now where the, everything needs to start clicking. Everything needs to start humming. And it looked like it started to do that uh, mostly today. What's always fun for me in these different practices is the, th the things they try to work on. So today was the Cortland Sutton double pass. They were trying to get where he uh, gets the quick screen out and he sets up to try to complete a pass. The first one got completely blown up. Uh, actually, in, in the, the first one they tried to do, Bradley Chubb was out wide in coverage. Mm -hmm. And so was, I, was, I kind of would have liked to see Drew Locke check out of that because there was already a lot of people over in that area. It would have been difficult to do. The next one was an incomplete that they tried to get on, a, I think, of a little bit of a cross there from Vanette. But uh, either way, each practice has kind of its own unique things that they're trying to get ready for the season. Yeah, I felt like it was also feed Phil Lindsay through the air day. They had a, a bunch of swing passes, screen passes for him, try to get him going. That was interesting. Uh, the pass that you mentioned that uh, Chubb was out wide, a quarterback should check out of that. There should be a backside slant built into that play, right. and that's exactly what it should be is, is you pump fake the, the screen to make sure you tie up the middle linebacker, and then you look to the slant coming off the backside. But one of the big challenges for training camp is sometimes they want them to continue to run the play either way so that so it's tough to know whether he was given the option or the opportunity to check out of something like that or if they said no we want to see what it looks like we want to see the blocking in front see if we can find a way to work around this and that that's always the tough decision we run into the same thing when they have these the split practices mm -hmm. the scrimmage practices because they sometimes work on things even if it's going to fail mm -hmm. they want to see it fail and they want to see how you rebound from it right and and that's you know and it's camp that's what camp is designed for that's what these practices are designed for designed to fail and learn from failure you know so you don't want to be too alarmed by something not working but um typically on those plays though they do have something built into the backside just so that you read that and react the other way do you feel like lloyd cushionberry has all but sewn up the starting center job once again kind of got all of the reps today in in scout he didn't but again, as we we kind of couched on the show, it's tough to really know what they're working on in those processes. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. Today, he got all first team reps. Uh, I wouldn't say he cemented it, but I would say he's the leader in the clubhouse at this point. I, I thought Austin Schlopman played very well 
uh, at the center position. I think Lloyd Cushenberry is playing better. Uh, he's picking more things up. If they feel comfortable and confident in him, then he'll he'll have the nod on the starting day. And if they don't, well, they can turn to Schlopman, who looked more than reliable. Thought Deshaun Hamilton had a nice day, uh, caught the touchdown, and Car- Carsey also bobbled it a little bit. Had another deep completion down the left side where Bryce Callahan was in coverage. He beat him on mm-hmm. it. It was kind of an out route kind of thing. He beat him on it, had to make a tough catch where Bryce Callahan was flashing in front of his face, got it, was able to turn up field and, and make a move. Had a drop later on, but again, a lot of receivers had dropped, not making excuses for him. But Deshaun Hamilton, I think, as we discussed on the show, further for me, cementing his role on this roster. Yeah, I think with the injuries, he's definitely going to make this the squad too. I think that you, you've winnowed down the wide receiver field enough that, that he makes it either way. But you want to see just a little bit more consistency out of him. Uh, making those big plays is great, but you need to make the routine ones. And that drop that he had was was a fairly routine one. Um, and, and that's kind of been the knock on him. Maybe it's concentration in a game, whatever. Uh, but you need to see the reliable, steady hands from him. And if you can get that out of Deshaun Hamilton, then not only will he make the team, he'll actually get on the field. You actually picked seven receivers to make this roster, at least right now. I think that's going to – I think with Tyree Cleveland, I think you could see seven. Well, Tyree Cleveland continues to make nice plays. His long stride, when he gets going in speed, he hits those shallow crosses. He is, he is really tough to defend. All right, for more coverage of the Broncos training camp, again, tune in to Broncos Country tonight weeknights from 7 to 11 p.m. now. Back to you, Alexis. Well, the Broncos will be off on Wednesday, but that means you could hear even more from Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright tomorrow night at 6.30 on KTVD Channel 20 or at 7 o'clock on the Broncos YouTube channel for a brand new episode of Broncos Country Tonight. Training Camp Live will be back on Thursday morning at 9.15 as Steve Atwater will be joined by Tyler Columbus and Matt Boyer will be filling in for me Thursday night for the Day 11 recap on Training Camp Tonight, powered by Ford. As always, thank you so much for watching Broncos Country. We'll see you next time.